Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, where attendees will learn how to leverage a fully allocated P&L as a management reporting tool and gain insight into improving the quality of services and reducing costs by establishing shared service centers for both corporate functions and client-facing activities. Today's webinar is hosted by two of Aletheia's business solutions experts, both Oracle ACES, Alex Blinarzik, practice manager, and Mike Killeen, senior vice president. During the webinar, you may submit questions through the chat module, and time will be made at the end of the webinar to address them. Aletheia offers value-added services, including enterprise resource planning, enterprise performance management, e-business suite, and business analytics. So stay connected with us for answers to your business analytics solutions needs. Thank you. Great. Th thanks, Joey. Want to, Alex, want to go to the next slide. We'll talk the agenda. So um, good morning, everybody. Uh, really quickly on the agenda, we're going to spend some time on introductions of the speakers uh, and talk a little bit about Alithia uh, and our organization. We're going to spend some time talking about the need for strategic P&Ls. Um, you know, most of the Oracle EPM suite is focused on the, the office of, of finance. Um, but enterprise performance management is really about the, the enterprise view, getting into operations and beyond finance. And we'll talk a bit about strategic P&Ls help support that. Um, Alex will spend a little time talking about Oracle EPM Cloud and the profiting cost management module. Um, and then we've got a number of use cases that we're going to go through across a variety of industries showing strategic P&Ls in action that include operational profitability use case uh, for distributor, uh, fully allocated P&L for financial services, and fully allocated P&L for uh, a life sciences organization that also has manufacturing elements to it. So hopefully, based on your organizational needs, you'll see some things that are, are relevant. Uh, and then finally, we'll wrap it up with the closing and Q&A. Uh, next slide real quick, Alex. Um, first on introductions, I'm Mike Clean. I'm Alithia Senior Vice President of Technology and Strategy. I recently celebrated my 23th anniversary with Alithia, um, going back to the original legacy Ranzel days. Um, my role in the company is to support our customers in the selection and deployment of really multi-product solution architecture, uh, ranging up to both analytics and the various EPM tools uh, including the planning tool, the profitability tool, which are most relevant for the solution. I've been an Oracle Ace since about 2008, um, and my hobbies include uh, really playing the guitar and, and music in general, uh, and being involved with my children's activities, including my son's water polo team. Uh, and then sitting on my lap right now, I have my Shih Tzu puppy, who's my office assistant for the day, so hopefully she'll, she'll be quiet. Uh, Alex, why don't you introduce yourself? All right, thank you, Mike. Hi, everyone. My name is Alex. I'm the Lithia Product Manager for Profitability and Cost Management. I've been operating in the EPM space for 13 years and working with Lithia for the past eight. Uh, I've done architecture, design, integration, optimization, implementation, I'm certified in profitability and cost management, planning in this space, but also SQL scripting. I've been an Oracle Ace Associate for the past year, and my hobbies are generally related to outdoor activities, new cultures, yeah. learning foreign languages, Pretty sure you can hear my accent, so English is not my first language, um, but I was happy to learn it at an early age. And um, yes, yeah, so I love everything about winter sports as well. All right, thank you, Mike. Great, next slide, please. Um, Battalithia, uh, Joey uh, mentioned this, but um, we are um, Oracle's, sorry, we are Alithia's dedicated Oracle practice focused on EPM analytics and uh, most recently through our Traverse and Acquisition ERP. Uh, we have a really seasoned team. Um, you know, we've been in this business for, for 24 years as a company being founded in 1996. We have seven Oracle Aces on our team, average delivery experience of eight years, um, and most of the management team, including myself, have been in the company over 15 years. A uh, really great thing about EPM is it's applicable across all industries. We're going to focus on a couple of them today, uh, but we're definitely having a lot of traction in this space in industries like financial services uh, and healthcare, which are probably two of our top verticals. Um, and then since our inception, we've really been involved in over 3,000 projects. Um, so at the end of the day, most recently, since 2004, over 200 cloud implementations, which is really where the space is going. Uh, so again, if there are any questions at the end about, about any of this, please feel free to raise your hand. Next slide, Alex. And just, um, you know, one thing we're most proud about is um, really the value that we're bringing to our, our customers who we view as, as business partners. Uh, to me, the surest testament of a, a customer being successful is, you know, obviously they come back for more work with you, 
but also they want to share their experiences. And we're very fortunate to have a very broad list of customers that um, I've spoken with us at Open World, um, Kaleidoscope, Modern Business Experience, and Collaborate. Um, and many of these customers, including customers such as like Mason and Vanguard um, and Thermo Fisher and Care First, have been successful with the um, profit and cost management technology. Um, so again, you should be able to find some of those resources online as well. Great. Next slide. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about the need for strategic PLs and and what we mean about it. Um, and you know, uh, a graph from about ten years ago in really the first financial crisis. And unfortunately, looking at the markets today, we've got a little bit of, of history repeating itself. But um, the reason strategic PLs are important is because you know performance management is really about linking strategy to execution and being able to react when conditions change. Next, Alex. So if I kind of look, um, you know, a typical profile, things are, are great when we're growing and we're doing, doing fine. Next slide. But um, unexpected activities can occur. Um, and, you know, if you're not doing scenario modeling, assessing the health of your business from an operational standpoint and creating the models that are necessary to link outcomes to, to events, it becomes very difficult very quickly. And so one of the most important things about performance management and strategic P&Ls in general is while there's an accountability view, um, which is kind of the what occurred and, and what needs to be reported to your, your stakeholders, um, there, there's also a, an operational or strategic P&L view, which is really important so that you can not only recognize when, when things are going to potentially happen, but you can do so in a way that's timely enough that you can react to it and do something about it. And um, again, the reality is right now we have customers who are doing emergency forecasts, just giving the, the climate of what's occurring. Um, and one of the key outcomes of that is, is really getting to a strategic p &L. Next slide, Alex. So next uh, animation, please. So what, so strategic p &Ls are needed to explain, can you go back one please, Alex? Strategic p &Ls are needed to explain the why. Um, again, you know, within the EPM suite and within ERP, um, you know, as part of the financial close process, um, they're typically statutory or even high, manage, high level managerial uh, P&Ls that are produced by segment. And they're typically focused on financials. Um, and, you sort of, and you see chart fields related to it, such as legal entities, um, cost centers, um, chart of accounts. Um, and typically financial transactions are aggregated into general ledger account balances, which themselves are submitted into the financial reporting tool uh, to produce whatever results are needed for either regulatory or board reporting or, or investor reporting. And finance plays a role in this. But if these statutory p and show the what, um, next slide, Alex, what they don't necessarily do is explain the why. Um, and at the end of the day, one of the areas where FP&A adds the most value as a business partner is creating the models, providing the commentary, providing the analysis um, that goes past financial reporting that provides the explanation around what occurred. From an actual standpoint, if I'm looking at a result, um, you know, why did that result occur? From a forecast perspective, almost going in reverse, what are the operational activities that will do that? So fp a has a responsibility to engage with operations management, marketing, and sales, and ensure that the financial results that they are both predicting and explaining um, can be performed at a level um, that the lines of business understand. Um, this includes organizational structures in the line of business, product lines, channels. And some of the questions that come up are, for example, why has an increased revenue increased my profitability? or what level of resources do I need to support this particular customer? Um, or what is the true profit contribution margin of a product or, or service? Um, even in manufacturing organizations where customers do a good job of standard costing to get to product P&Ls, um, manufacturing plants have variances, um, and there's always the aspect of cost to serve in addition to the overheads found in the corporate functions. Um, so again, the one thing that we're seeing our clients do is try to get to a point where really the final outcome of the complete statutory P&L is reflected in the aggregate view of all the managerial or strategic P&Ls and ensuring they, and getting to the point where these views are simply different pivots of the same data sets, as opposed to different independent processes itself to create one version of the truth. Next slide, Alex. 
So um, an example of a strategic P&L in action, um, if we think about uh, customer profitability um, or product profitability and the fact that um, you, know, you can think of these customers or products as a portfolio of things that some create value, some are neutral in value and some destroy value. If you do cumulative profit, one of the visualizations you can see is a whale curve. Uh, next slide, next, uh, one more. So in this particular example, um, the whale curve, which is shaped like a whale, maybe you see an instance where 50% of your customers are, are adding profit, 15% are, are neutral, but 35% are, are destroying value. Maybe based on <coughs> the products they're choosing, the mix they're doing, um, you know, the distributor example, <coughs> making sure that the number of routes is optimized is important, right? Um, so in this particular example, if I'm looking at you know, the overall profit of 140 million potentially, but then the destroyed value that gets me down to 81 million overall, you know, what are these customers or products doing that create this particular loss? And so the theory here is if you can generate a well curve by customer, by product, you can make intelligent decisions about your business. Next slide, Alex. So, um, if, so the, here's the key thing. Um, you know, strategic P&Ls are important. And it's expected that FP&A has an ability to really provide this commentary and insight to the business. Um, why isn't everybody doing it? Or, and I, I think more importantly, everybody is doing it, but are they doing it in a way that's, that's optimal? Um, and one of the things that we see is that there are a variety of technology approaches that are out there that create challenges. The first are spreadsheets. Um, you know, in this particular example, um, even if you have a, a GL or a financial reporting tool, um, typically, FP&A still needs to download these, this content and tools like SmartView uh, and incorporate other sources and driver information with, with commentary. And the problem with this is your business changes. Um, it's time consuming. They lack controls and governance. Um, they could be error prone. You know, one of the classic examples for us with spreadsheets are do you want what you've got today or do you want the, the right answer? Um, and it can create key personnel dependencies because over time these can become unwieldy and create control risks in terms of the organization. A second way that people do this is in the ERP. Um, and you know, particularly for Oracle customers with tools such as PeopleSoft and Oracle e Business Suite, you'll typically see a variety of chart fields configured to support management reporting. Um, the challenge with this is that this creates bloat in the ledger. Um, it can slow your close process down. In addition, um, if there's any information from management reporting that doesn't conscribe to the chart fields or a level of detail that's important, this still gets you into a situation where you're reliant on other systems and offline content. Um, and then finally, you can lack transparency, particularly if to generate some of the views that are required, there's any sort of allocation or manipulation required. Um, typically you see a plethora of offline journals and rules that become difficult to explain in the end results. By the last component are custom built solutions. We have many customers that over the years and, and ourselves are included that have built you know, Visual Basic or Java applications on top of that space or maybe configured the planning tool to do what we need to do. The challenge with this is it can, again, can become a black box that's difficult to maintain. Um, it may go out of support, particularly if, if the program hasn't been updated. And again, as your business changes over time, um, you, while you may be able to run your model consistently, you may have challenges in, in updating it. And, and very often we see these models so complicated that a customer gets to the point where, yeah, let's just keep doing what we're doing and we'll do some adjustments along lines. So we don't want to break it. Next slide, Alex. So what we're really looking for, um, if we kind of call out the need, you know, there is a, there's a need for strategic P&Ls. Um, but from a technology standpoint, there are typically a series of challenges associated with creating them. Um, and so what our customers are looking for is, and we coined this acronym called FAST, are some key capabilities and in, in the solutions that are needed to deliver this view. The first is flexibility. And the flexibility really involves three pillars. The first is you are able to change it quickly as your business changes. The second is the ability for it to be business user driven to support that. And the third is being able to provide what if capabilities so that you can assess the impact of multiple forecasts, as well as generate pro forma views of historical results to see how things might have occurred differently. The second component is accuracy. Um, this is really about ensuring that the tool is controlled in terms of data and inputs, in addition to making sure that the tool has a variety of modeling capabilities to create meaningful results. 
Building models where everything allocates off of revenue doesn't really lend true insight into what you're trying to get to. The third component um, is shared methodology. Um, sometimes we'll see customers have one set of processes for their actuals buried in the ledger uh, and another set of processes for forecasts done into the budget. Um, this creates potential for disparate views, dual, dual maintenance. Um, Chromos creating a singular model so that you can do your next year budget versus current year forecast, your current year forecast versus your current year budget, and your current year forecast versus your prior year actuals. Those three incredible important views using different methodologies in a consistent manner is critical. And then finally, the last pillar is T for transparency. Um, you know, given the fact that many organizations are aligning to shared service centers, uh, not only for corporate functions such as IT and occupancy and finance and HR and legal, but because uh, um, you know, for global operations, um, you know, many lines of business are becoming sales works. You know, that contain you know the channels that are organized around how revenue is attained to. Um, it's important for those revenue generating functions that have got accountability to understand the nature of the drivers that influence their fully allocated P&Ls and make sure that what they budgeted for, actually they can manage on an actual basis. It's also important for service providers, um, you know, those, those finance, those global operation functions to understand really and manage their cost structures and make sure they're aligning their resources with demand. So flexibility, accuracy, shared methodology, and transparency, you know, fast. These are really the pillars of the, or the requirements that our customers are, are looking for. And when they choose to make an investment um, in solutions such as the ones we're gonna talk about, this is sort of front and center. With that, I'm gonna turn over to my colleague, Alex, and she's spent a little bit of time talking about the Oracle Kim Cloud technology and some use cases we've seen on our customer bases deploying it. Alex, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mike. So hello everyone again. Um, I'm going to start with the um, profitability and cost management overview, just so that we place a little bit within the architecture um, that we see today, this particular um, software, and then we're going to go on to the use cases later on. So let's have a look at the solution architecture for uh, Oracle, Oracle's family of offerings. When we say Oracle Enterprise Performance Management, we generally think about creating a visible connection between what do we have in our operations and what do we have in our finance the finance outcomes. So looking at our financial reports, we often find ourselves asking the question, what led me to this result? Was it something that I did or was it an external factor that impacted my numbers? Now in the on-premises world, uh, Oracle's offering was around tools called such as SBase, HFM, planning and strategic management. And then in 2008, Oracle launched this new product called Hyperion Profitability and Cost Management. HBCM for short. And it was aimed at tackling the topic of profitability and cost management analysis. And while there were these existing tools in the Oracle tools box that could um, perform allocations or perform a level of analysis um, similar to allocations, none of them really truly addressed this need for an increased flexibility and transparency that Mike was talking about a little bit earlier. And it, if they did, they didn't have it at the level of detail that the business analysis teams truly needed. So as Oracle moved to the cloud, um, so did the cloud offerings and the cloud versions of all these tools appeared. And one of them is the equivalent of HPCM. It's called profitability and cost management. Now, this one is bundled today as part of your enterprise licensing model. So if you do have a cloud subscription, but you don't know if you have profitability and cost management included in your subscription, just reach out to your uh, system administrator to find out if, if you already have access to this software. Now that we've gone through the solution architecture from a high level, let's have a look at the capabilities and workflow of PCM. Um, when we look at our typical workflow for profitability and cost management implementation, we always start with the mechanisms that we put in place in order to source the major three types of data sets that we're looking for. So type number one is the so-called master data. That represents our structures, such as chart of accounts, your products, customers, et cetera. The second type of data is the pre-allocated financials. And whether we're talking about actuals, planning or budgeting data or forecasting data, this, this is key. We need to know how do we source all these data sets in the most optimized manner. The third type of data that we're looking for is 
what is the source of the driver and statistical? So when we say drivers and statistical data, we refer to volumes, percentages. An example is square feet for facilities, which is quite an easy one, um, and so on. So how do we connect all these different types of sources of data? Well, we need to ensure, first and foremost, that we have a reliable and scalable integration uh, solution. Because we need to make sure that whatever it is that we put together can move with the pace of the business. And key here is the overall ease of use and ease of management of the system. Well, now that we covered the first step, let's get our second step, model development. What does this mean? Well, once we have all the required sources of data, the focus has to shift. And we have to look at how we're going to achieve our goals for data clarity, transparency, and flexibility. And here's where profitability and cost management cloud excels because it enables the business users or the business analysts to take charge of their model. And PCM has this graphical user interface that's very much built like a point and click sort of mechanism. And it enables business users to create and update their allocation logic. And this concept is key because it, it means that it is not the IT staff that owns the product. It is a business. The next component is around model execution. So I enabled my business users here to create my model because I have all the data sets in place and I have this allocation engine, which is point and click. And now I need to, um, and I, they, they need to be able to see this transparency and they, they need to be able to execute on, on this model. So the same graphical user interface that they use for model development is what they use for model execution. And while the users have this uh, power to trigger any sorts of processes in the background, there is also a mechanism for you to set up um, like a lights out, lights out automation. And um, on the, in the PCM uh, Alithia team, we've developed these accelerators that we implement across most, if not all of our clients. Um, where we've, um, we, defi we define the uh, most efficient way in which to execute a specific process. Uh, let's look at the final piece of the puzzle, and that's publishing reports and having interactive analysis. Well, it's all great that we can load the data, we can build the rules, and we can launch the allocation. But all that is not helping me if I'm not able to see the results in a timely manner. And better still, if I can build some dashboarding and, and reporting capability on top of it all and have it in own location, it, that's ideal. So Oracle's approach to reporting has shifted because they've now invested heavily into solutions which enable the business users to get the most uh, value out of the data without having to extract it and send it to some other systems or software or other tools. And um, I personally have a couple of blogs on these dashboarding capabilities. So if you are interested in seeing more detail about that, I would invite you to go to the Alithia website and, uh, and check out those, those blogs, which are like step-by-step, step step, almost like step-by-step step tutorials on how to make the most value, take the most value from your, um, from your investment in the software. All right, so now that we have this overview of the capabilities and workflow, let's look at the next um, the, the next um, information, which is the classifications of PCM use cases. Um, our Lithia team classified the different type of implementations based on our experience over the past 12 years with this product, whether it was on-premises and now it's cloud. And figuring out the type of project that we're dealing with represents the first step when we engage with any new client. This isn't just helpful for us to figure out what the approach perspective should be, but also it's helping us align the different resources that we have and the ones that are best suited for an implementation based on their core functional strengths combined with whatever their uh, skills and capabilities are in the technical aspect. And this way of classifying the implementation sits on top of what we call a, like the typical enterprise organization structure or data flow. And we start at the top where we have group headquarters, which basically represents your enterprise company typically find that that's where you typically find the office of the CEO or uh, compliance and risk, et cetera. And then we proceed to the next step and that's represented by shared services. And whether we're thinking here about um, 
controllership, IT, property, facilities, HR, etc. If, if these are moving, if these are, services are moving into a shared service center capacity, then this is the type of use case that you'd see for PCM. Um, this way of um, classifying the implementations um, is, is mimicking that flow of data. And as we move on through the company structure, we start to look at things beyond the, the management point of view. And we start to switch into that legal entity point of view, especially in larger organizations. So here's where we identify that flow of expenses from either group overhead, sheriff services, or both of these into what we call organizations or divisions that are producing the revenue. And these are visions that we see on the screen. They can sometimes be um, organized around the nature of uh, what service do we provide? Are we staff? Are we IT? Are we facilities? Or we can look at distinctions based on geographic location or based on the products that we are responsible for. So as expected, each of these divisions, they're going to have their own overheads and they'll perform their own services. And there's an interest in figuring out their own profitability and, and they want to clarify pricing for their own products and services. And these are your typical financial close use cases where we involve inter-unit or regulatory charges such as transfer pricing and expense allocation. Um, here's where we see what we call entity to entity allocation. And these are the results that we generally have to look back into the GL. As like we mentioned earlier that some of these should be um, tied into your GL and your financial close. The uh, managerial reporting use cases they're right here at the bottom, and they have two flavors. One of them is fully allocated P&L, and the other one is operational profitability. Now, the fully allocated P&L is more geared towards your fp &A teams, and operational profitability is generally a more BI type of solution. And today, we will focus on three use cases. Two of them are focused on fully allocated P&L, one of them on operational profitability. And all three use cases represent real-life implementation. And they're from different industries, and I hope that these examples will give you not only a, a level of confidence within the tool, but they would open up a little bit the perspective and will help you think about how you could best leverage this product to solve your business needs. And let's have a look at the three strategic P&L use cases that we have for you today. We have distribution services, financial services, and life sciences. And I'm not going to go into too much detail on this slide, but this is almost like an overview of what we're going to talk next. And um, while the industries are very different, um, I want you to see the common denominator, which is profitability and cost management. And I'll start with an introduction of each of these clients so that you can see the similarities or differences between your business and, and what, what we have for these particular use cases. And we're going to go through key objectives of their initiatives. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about solution and benefits. And then we're going to conclude with the value add of implementing profitability and cost management for their reality. So let's dive right in. First use case is distribution services. We have here an example of a client that had revenues over 7.5 billion. Their location was North America and their change catalyst was strategic product and customer analysis. Um, distribution, you know, it's generally a low margin high volume type of, type of business. Um, and the, their main objective in this case was, we need to determine which customer and product are the most profitable. Um, the volumes here are for reference purposes, just so you get an understanding of the size of the client and the, the complexity of their systems. They have roughly 1,200 locations and 4,300 customers. So let's look at the key objectives and challenges for the project. Well, we needed to create a fully allocated income statement, and it had to be by operating unit, product, vendor, and customer. We needed to clearly identify underperforming business segments, and the topic of today's presentation is becoming data-driven, right? So we're thinking we need to make sure that our companies or our, our uh, business analysts are making decisions based on data. So it's not just about identifying underperforming business segments, but incorporating those insights into your financial forecast and enabling the business to maximize profitability. 
So that last bullet point, ability to weigh business decisions based on results, that's what makes a company being, be data-driven. What were the challenges here? Well, um, we needed to unify a lot of methodologies because they had a series of mergers and acquisitions. Um, they did have lack of transparency and ability to set expectations. They didn't know when their results would be ready month on month, so that was a challenge. And um, the business was relying heavily on um, a legacy Acorn tool that was combined with a lot of spreadsheets. Needless to say, they had a lot of inconsistent profitability methodologies, and they also had this need to analyze their core systems, such as I, like Data Warehouse, for example, and they, they wanted to have this ability to create their drivers um, that needed to be used in allocation. Um, last but not least, limited ability to update analysis processes. So business was changing, but they didn't have the flexibility to change their analysis and their managerial reporting views. All right, so let's look at what solution we have implemented for them. Um, and uh, in this particular case, the solution was around the GL, uh, profitability and cost management in, in conjunction with Enterprise Data Warehouse. So we had uh, actual data that was coming in from the GL. Uh, we also leveraged the GL itself for uh, giving us our master data source, so structures such as charts of accounts, departments, products, et cetera. Um, PCM, profitability and cost management. Well, we leveraged it to provide clarity and to share service charges and expense allocations. And Enterprise Data Warehouse, we used it both as driver data, so we managed to leverage their existing information in order to drive their allocation processes, but it was also consuming the allocation results from PCM. So we had to churn the numbers and send them all the way back to EDW. Um, let's look at the key benefits. We were able to create a single point of reference for all allocations, and we consolidated all those Excel-based models into a single PCM app, and then we had that holistic profitability analysis and decision-making um, that was to customer product and vendor levels within PCM itself. And that in itself led to that next bullet point, which is the expedited analysis and decision-making regarding top and bottom customers, products, or vendors. Um, the dependency on manual processes was broken because we now no longer looked at Excel spreadsheets. So we ensured that end-to-end -end process automation as well as that ability to report up to 26 historical periods. So no more tracking, which Excel spreadsheet did I use last month compared to which version, what, what version do you have, what versions does he have? So it was that, that breaking of dependencies on offline systems that could not be controlled. And last but not least, one feature that was not attainable in those desired processes that they had before it was the enhanced analytics and what a scenario modeling that now they had at their disposal within PCM. So what was the value add of PCM when we look at the, the entire solution? Well, yes, we manage allocations, we streamline internal operations, like we said, but let's look at what is it that I truly gained by implementing this one product? Well, flexibility. Flexibility is key, especially in an ever-changing market. So you have to have a system in place that allows you to quickly react to the changes within the business or within your environment or the industry. Um, cloud-based, this was cloud-based, so there was no installation cost, and that was definitely a plus. There was no more waiting for months to stand up your environment. Uh, remember we mentioned the client was now able to compare those 26 periods at all times? Well, that was key when they wanted to identify any sorts of trends within their own business or changes within their org structure. Um, you do have, you do want to have, I mean, you have the best tool for the job when you have profitability and cost management. And it has a lot of out-of-the-box capabilities for defining costs and revenue distribution. Speed, that's essence, that's essential as well. We managed to produce their final results in under 60 minutes. Um, increased um, scalability and predictability. Scalability, remember that shared methodology that Mike was talking about a little bit earlier and having common taxonomies. And that's something you want to have and you want to look for when your org structures are constantly churning. Uh, predictability, no more work, no more walking in the dark, that's what I call it. I, I now know where, where I'm going and I know what I'm looking for. Every change in my data or my structures is now transparent in the PCM solution. So I can track it. I can see the impact that it has. And last but not least, um, whenever you choose a partner for any of these implementations, you just 
you need to look at someone with strong relationships with Oracle. And that's because you get to the right people faster. And our product team uh, is in constant communication with Oracle product team. We exchange information. We make sure that we uh, submit enhancement requests all the time. And uh, you need to just look for that relationship. The fact that it exists has proven to be mutually beneficial for us time and time again over these uh, implementations. All right, let's look at the next use case, which is financial services. This is a uh, medium sized client, revenue 3 billion, North America, and they have a situation here. They, the change capitalist is strategic line of business analysis, but fact of the matter is this particular client, they have their expense planning by cost center and their revenue planning by line of business. And they wanted to generate the PL by line of business. So how do you match those two pieces of the puzzle? How do you look at your expense and your revenue when they're by different details? How can you create a consistent p and um, The goals here, I love the fact that they have very um, well-defined goals. They wanted to simplify, standardize, and automate. Um, and let's look at the key objectives and challenges of this particular project. They had their, they, they wanted to generate a fully allocated segment view, and they wanted to achieve greater insight and transparency. But the challenges here were they wanted to reduce recurring operating expenses, and this was a bigger challenge, broader strategic initiative to improve control. So this spanned beyond the implementation of PCM that we're talking about here. Um, let me give you a little bit more detail about the whole ecosystem within this um, use case. We had the financial planning and analysis team that was responsible to, um, to perform these planning and forecasting and managerial reporting views, but they also had to um, support a lot of external reporting because they liaised with multiple groups, such as tax, treasury, multiple lines of business. So initially they had this heavy reliance on Excel and a series of other legacy tools that needed to be upgraded. And while the numbers they were producing were actually correct, the problem was that they had such a high level of manual processing and handoffs and reconciliations and checks. And these all occur throughout the process and it cr just created multiple potential breaking points within the process. So you may have a system today that is working for you because it does give you some level of comfort uh, and, and trust with, within the, within the numbers that are being produced. But if you do have a lot of breaking points and you don't know, um, you, you don't have clarity on when the result will be generated or if it's, if it's reliable enough at this moment in time when you truly need it, then you need to look a little bit at how, how can you make it, how can you enable a system that makes sure that you get to where you need to get to and there are no hesitation. Um, let's look at the solution that we've implemented for this client. So we had a combination of a planning application, PCM, profitability and cost management, and data uh, relationship management solution. Uh, what did the planning application have to do? Well, we needed to allow FPNA users to input and load um, their PNL and balance sheet, forecast and budget data. Uh, it needed to support a driver-based revenue and expense plan and support that PNL reporting and budgeting with summary level balance sheet. And all of this uh, it, it was just created in order to allow that FPNA team to do management reporting. So where did PCM come into play here? Well, we had the direct chargeback allocation um, that le leveraged the cost pool concepts. And when we talk about cost pool concepts, we mean grouping similar costs that behave in a similar way in different categories. We had this uh, corporate line of business allocation, and uh, we used a series of drivers such as time survey, headcount, and all, uh, all sorts of other drivers. And they were all collected in this planning application that you see at the top. And we were able to get to that post allocated data to roll up to their PNL. And data relationship management, well, that reduced maintenance. And maybe it's not something that you care about too much uh, in the grand scheme of things, but uh, let me tell you that on, the, on this expectation that if you want your business users to be the ones that drive the allocation methodology and the ones that maintain and manage your um, allocation solution, then setting up uh, purpose-built hierarchies and attributes and properties that enable to automatically create your allocation uh, or derive your allocation rules is key. It, it just overall, it's a better system. It's a more robust system, and it gives them the confidence that they don't have to um, 
you know, tweak every intersection and look at every um, data point to make sure that it's working as expected. So um, let's look at the key benefits. Well, great the productivity, tighter controls, everything was automated, now connected, integrated. We had a flexible cost allocation process. We did have that transparency of plan and the allocation results because PCM was able to do that full transparency and traceability. And that strategic alignment was achieved because we moved away from offline custom solutions. Then in a nutshell, this client went from a corporate expense allocation process that had various manual steps and they were obtaining source data from multiple documents and systems. We moved to a single technology with business user enabled flexibility and uh, audit and control. And we had those shared methodologies that we're talking about across multiple management cycles. And that gave them that enhanced traceability and transparency into their final results. So what was the value add of PCM in this case? Well, we had this process which needed cost center to cost center expense distribution as part of the plan. And that was maintaining planning. And in PCM, we did the allocation to line of business. So what do I want to say with, with that? What, what point am I driving here? Uh, we should always explore what can remain within your planning cycle or what should remain within your planning cycle and what should be part of your profitability and cost management area. So if cost center to cost center allocations have a direct impact on your planning process and they're required to complete the planning cycle, then you should keep them within your enterprise planning. Whereas, whereas the allocations that are by line of business, if they are not part of that planning cycle, then a good home for them would be profitability and cost management because that way you don't disrupt the budget close calendar. All right, let's have a look at our next third and final use case, and that's life sciences. This client was a little bit bigger compared to the other ones. Revenue over 18 billion a year. Location international. Deployment in this case was North America, but we did have to do a lot of um, training and um, we had to um, go around the world to, to make sure everybody was aligned. Um, and we had here a change catalyst. They were moving from on-prem to and, and a series of custom solutions to the cloud. But when I say that that was a change catalyst, the reality is this they really lack transparency between what the vision was controlling and what corporates was managing. And they needed to generate the P&L by product and department. So even though the move was triggered by, hey, let's, let's move to the cloud, let's keep the pace with technology, the, um, the true reason, not the true, but one of the main reasons is also trying to get to that transparency. Um, I put here the volume of users, just so you guys can understand a little bit the sheer volume of this implementation and the disruptive processes that would happen across their uh, divisions because there were just so many people involved. Uh, so we needed to have a couple of objectives here and we definitely did see a couple of challenges that were quite interesting. So we had 400 legal entities. We have a lot of offline Excel-based solutions and I'll, I'll, I'll explain why in a second. And uh, we had to standardize the planning and forecasting, forecasting methodologies. Um, why did I say that? I'll explain in a minute. Well, this client in particular, because of its sheer size, it was constantly acquiring and constantly churning its organization structure. When I say constant, it, I, I, you could see changes happening month on month um, quite easily. So imagine a situation where you have a business where it, your org structure churns every month. Well, you can imagine that as with any new acquisitions, you get new systems. So in this case, we had a lot of ERPs across hundreds of sites. Um, so another challenge here was that the, by stemming from the fact that they had different systems, the business units, they had different planning and forecasting methodologies, and it required a lot of standardization. Um, so we were planning to pursue efficiencies in the current process, but we also needed to have the ability to create and maintain multiple versions of data, the what if capabilities, and, and get everyone aligned. Let's start following the same methodology. Let's look at the implementation. So here, the solution here was, we had a combination of systems, a combination of systems, and we had planning, profitability, but also you see here references to um, on-premises application. So whatever it is that we were setting up, we needed to make sure that it would communicate well with the existing investment in the on-premises solutions, such as data relationship management, financial management, and that space. 
Um, so here, in this case, divisional leaders were being held accountable for costs that were directly incurred, as well as costs that were assigned from corporate. So they needed to understand the distinction between controllable, non-controllable, and from a planning perspective, the corporate, um, the corporate was planning on initiatives that a division did not control at an individual level, but the divisions were still held accountable. So whether those initiatives were related to sales or otherwise. So here's where PCM stepped in. So we had planning, uh, product level planning, enterprise um, planning and budgeting cloud, and then PCM. And PCM stepped in to uh, clarify that distinction of the reporting view versus the accountability view and to be able to decompose how much of the corporate expenses were included in each division's P&L. And transparency here was key to understand what I own versus what I can influence from a division perspective. Um, and then we needed the system to be agile because remember we were saying that this, this business was constantly churning. So where are the key benefits? Standardization. We were able to do that um, with a global planning and forecasting capability. So imagine deploying a system with 2,000 users and making sure everybody's in line. We did have this high capacity that was needed to be enabled round the clock worldwide usage. And we needed to have this high adaptability, and that's what we achieved. We had these constant reorgs that came in, and the business was expanding. So then we needed to make sure that whatever we set would keep the pace with, with their org structure. Let's look at the um, profitability value add. So um, planning and budgeting tasks were kept separate from the intricate line of business distribution. And the, Imagine that a system that's already shared with 2,000 users is already seeing the pressures of timeline and availability without even thinking about how we layer in the lines of business allocation. So planning and forecasting, that was the basis of the corporate P&L. They were collected and enhanced with an APBCS. PCM was the official book of records for their fully allocated P&L. And we churned those numbers in PCM, and now we were sending them back into planning at a different level of detail so that they could um, see the results and have a unified reporting mechanism. So what did we achieve with PCM? Where was the value at? We had this one common allocation language across all divisions, common dimensions uh, and structures with the planning application. Uh, we had the, uh, what we were calling the uh, follow the bouncing ball across management reporting ecosystems. And uh, we had an efficient mechanism to facilitate restatements, reorgs, and a centralized system admin with a decentralized allocation input. Because remember, those 2,000 users that they were inputting different numbers and different drivers, they're all collected and sent over to PCM. So now, when we conclude the general managers with this PCM solution, they were able to fully understand their cost structures and they were able to. Uh, lead. They were able to lead to better results because now, now they knew how to optimize their use of resource. This was our last um, use case. And in closing, I would like to share with you one slide that uh, I think it describes in a nutshell the fact that when you look at profitability and cost management, it's not just the strategic P&L use case. It's far more than that. And it's not just the industries I've mentioned. A lot more, there are a lot more industries to which you can apply this solution. And today we focused on the managerial reporting view and the operational profitability with the use cases that we had. So here, there are so many more um, use cases that you could look into. And um, what we put together is a list of the, um, different, um, the different industries in which we've implemented these processes. So today we looked at fully allocated P&L for life sciences and for financial services. And we looked at operational profitability for distribution. But um, you can also look at activity-based costing, uh, patient encounter for healthcare and so on. And I would like to um, make sure that you, you know that you're aware that there will be a financial close use case webinar next, next week. And it will be around transfer pricing. So follow us and make sure that you are um, on the Alicia um, newsletter and that you, uh, you get notifications for our future events to make sure that you don't miss these. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mike for our last slide. Great, thanks Alex. Uh, why don't you just bring all the animation in, it's fine. Bring it all. 
So, um, you know, one of the things, uh, so just kind of to summarize the, the presentation, you know, one of the things we want people to understand is what a strategic PL is um, and why it's important. And, and really the key thing, strategic PL is required to link financial results with the why and operational activities, both historically in terms of actual analysis, as well as in a forward looking capacity in terms of forecasting and planning. And so these things are really cu tightly coupled with um, the planning process and a real major tool for financial planning and analysis professionals to, to use and add value to their business partners and senior management. Uh, the second thing we want you to take away is understanding of the Oracle profitability and cost management technology, um, specifically um, how it fits into the Oracle enterprise performance management suite. As Alex pointed out, um, if you are licensed for EPM Enterprise now, which is a, the new licensing model that's been available since June of 2019, um, for all intents and purposes, um, you should have this technology already. Uh, so as she noted out, at, check with your system administrator, uh, and then you can provision additional pods by reaching out to Oracle Sales for, for no cost. Uh, the third thing you should have learned from this is some examples of use cases. We saw operational profitability in distributors with razor thin margins, focusing really on more customer profitability and vendors in terms of efficiency. We saw fully allocated PLs for management reporting in the financial services industry where shared service centers are pretty typical. And we saw really divisional and product PLs in life sciences company for a rapidly growing organization with constant reorg, where being able to update their business and how they manage it needed to be separated from their ERP and their, their financial flows process. Um, the last thing before we turn it over to questions, I wanna leave you a couple of self-evaluation questions. You know, one, one of the things that we find for most of our install base is, yeah, we're, we're doing this, but, but where am I? Um, and I, and I think self-evaluation questions are really good to kind of get a sense of that. And some examples of questions that are, are probably most predictable are, you know, do companies understand the true cost of products or services? Um, you know, gross margin, uh, standard margin are pretty acceptable. Getting to both contribution margin and operating profit or EBITDA um, tend to be a little bit harder. And, and so that's one of the things that's really come to the forefront. The second is around transparency. You know, how much time are your finance teams explaining the results of models and rules and allocations? You know, do, um, even if users aren't doing self-service reporting, are they digging through Excel spreadsheets and reporting and asking questions? Um, if you start adding all that up, it can be quite painful. Uh, the third is do your costing methods operate at the right level of detail? Um, is there a lot of debate related to what, what needs to occur? Um, and uh, you know, I do think really related to the what if analysis or, or change management function, um, you know, one of the things about this tool being able to spin up different views to assess the impact of different methodologies and, and get it right. Um, and that's important. We find for many of our customers is after we get the initial deployment in place, as our business changes, as they monitor results, they'll go back and refine the methodologies to get to something more meaningful, particularly with feedback from lines of business. And then some of the other things that we see with respect to time and cost of operations, you know, are you dependent on IT or is the business in control and, and how much does the solution cost? Those certainly come to the forefront, but um, I'm not gonna go through them all. You can see the list. Um, I do wanna spend some time um, thanking, you know, Alex, uh, who's done really great work at our company. Uh, in driving, you know, thought leadership in this space. And um, we've got about seven minutes left. So I'll check with Joey to see if any questions came through the, the chat um, and we can see if we get them answered. A couple of questions, Mike. Uh, one, uh, regarding the strategic P&L, where do you store complete historical data and what level do you store this data as you store more than 10 years of historical data? Right, so that's a great question. One of the things we find with one of our, with many of our customers, um, and this is really one of the good things about the Oracle EPM Enterprise licensing, um, is that there's typically the separation of a kind of active models from historical models. Um, if I look at a typical customer um, for current state analysis and management reporting, they're typically looking at maybe a prior year three, prior year two, prior year one, current year, next year one, two, three, right? Nothing really more than that. And the reason that's relevant because if you're gonna do any sort of restatement of historical results before changing the methodology, you'll pick that up. Most of our clients, however, have a separation between their kind of processing model and their, their archive model. 
Um, and so with, because in Oracle EPM Enterprise Cloud, you've got the ability to stand up really as many instances as you want. Uh, that sets you up in a way where you can set up an archiving strategy for kind of read-only data sets for analysis and go from there. As far as the level of grain is concerned, um, you know, typically um, you see um, in the PNL line items established um, and uh, typically lines of business established. One of the things that ends up happening is you, um, you know, if you look at detailed products and customers, over time you may decide some of those more detailed operational views aren't, aren't relevant. So there's a little bit of a depends in there, but I, I do think the one consistency is that for every customer, there's a, a current state of analysis for comparison reporting, to particularly respect to like their forecast, their perspective views. There's always some sort of archived queue or model where the historic results exist. So your next question, Joe. Okay. Um, which module are you using to create the strategic PL? Uh, the street chief PL is being created in Oracle Profit Good Cost Management Cloud. Um, it, from a reporting standpoint, um, what we are seeing some of our customers do is publish those results back to Oracle Enterprise Planning Cloud. Um, generally, the dependency to that is a function of whether or not the strategic PL is operating at a management reporting level, line of business, or channel, or segment, or is or, the, or more fully allocated PL. The alternative is if it's an operational profitability level. So basically, if, if you're delivering operational profitability, you know, detailed customers and products, which is the distributor use case, the strategic PL is both processed and reported on in the profitability tool. If you're typically delivering a fully allocated PL, um, which is more summarized, the pro strategic PL is generated in the profitability tool, and what if analysis is supported there? But typically the final published results are brought back into the management reporting solution where you tend to have a larger group of users, which in most instances is either planning or in the on-premise world that space. Next question. Okay, regarding HPCM, we have three modules for allocation. Shared service expense allocation to revenue generating line of business, allocate revenue operations revenue generation by line of business, and for external regulatory reporting, allocate expenses based on revenue generation by line of business. Right. The question is, can we build one model that supports uh, uh, the above three requirements as this crosses more than 15 dimensions? Um, so the answer to that is you can, but you maybe shouldn't, right? And, and here's the reason why. Um, so number one, even if you built one model that did all three, chances are they would be in different points of view. Um, Particularly, we find there's an ability to align operational profitability with strategic PLs on the management reporting side. Um, it's one of the reasons why we combine those two together. So, so if you think about kind of the management reporting view being done first and operational profitability done second, they kind of go hand in hand with each other. On the financial close side, we find a lot of instances, particularly in regulated industries, that there are exceptions and adjustments to the allocations being the basis for the billing. Sometimes there are billing caps, there are thresholds, and, and Andrew will talk about some of that next week on our transfer pricing use case. Um, so what we tend to find for, for most of our customers is that they still may end up going down the path of creating separate models. Um, what they will do though is they'll typically try to bring them together into one reporting paradigm. Um, and, you know, that kind of gives the users one place to assess the impact of those different methodologies, but you still have the flexibility to process it. The other thing I'll leave you with that's important, um, particularly when I look at financial close versus management reporting is change control. We tend to find for many of our customers at the end of the calendar year, anything related to the actuals process has got to be completely locked down. But for budgeting and forecasting, that tends to be the period of time where you require the most flexibility. So from an operation standpoint, you know, you kind of get stuck in a situation where at the point in time you want to make the most changes to your managerial PL, you're you're kind of hamstrung. So so I think in general, big picture, if if you look at kind of things for financial close and strategic PLs for management reporting, in general, anything related to management reporting, whether it be operation fully out, but you probably pull together, even if it's in different POVs. But for your financial close process, we generally make the, the recommendation to keep that separate to the reasons I just described. Thanks, Mike. Um, thanks uh, to Mike and Alex uh, both for that comprehensive presentation. <clears throat>
Uh, questions can also be emailed to infosolutions at aletheia.com and we'll provide a response. Uh, visit our YouTube channel to view recordings of our previous webinars, including this one. <clears throat> um, uh, Mike has a, uh, a slide up uh, to show our participation at the upcoming uh, K-Scope conference uh, in June. Uh, we have several uh, speaker presentations, and um, so uh, we hope that uh, you'll be uh, attending the conference. And if so, please uh, visit our website uh, and specifically the event page that we have for um, KScope. And if you haven't registered yet, um, you can use our discount code ALI20 uh, to receive a, a $100 discount off the uh, price of the registration. We hope you gained insight from today's webinar. Please visit our website to learn about and register for upcoming webinars and follow us on social media to get alerts about upcoming events, training, and webinars. Our next webinar is uh, next Tuesday, March 19th, and it explores how Oracle profitability and cost management cloud service can boost an organization's ability to deliver timely transfer pricing and or intercompany billing results during the financial close process while delivering enhanced traceability and reporting. So visit the events page on our website to register for this and other upcoming webinars. Thank you Joe, to our Joe, audience. Joe. Yes. Yeah, Joe, I just want to, uh, back to that previous presentation. One interesting thing to hear on that webinar is how this particular customer, which has separate models for management reporting versus financial close, some of the things we did to um, create shared methodology. So, so again, the, the original question was, should we have separate models or not for processing? The answer is yes. But there's still a way to set it up so you can define your rules once and make it process in both models. So um, where there are common elements. So um, I definitely attend that to get some more insight. I'll, I'll leave you with that little uh, cliffhanger for next week. Thanks, Joey. Thanks, Mike. Uh, thank you to our audience for joining us. And thank you to both Mike and Alex for sharing your knowledge and expertise during this presentation. This concludes today's webinar.